Have you ever found yourself in a crowded restaurant, bar, or club struggling to get the bartender's attention? Would you prefer to skip the chit-chat and avoid worrying about closing your tab? In the 21st century, technology and nightlife should exist in harmony. Introducing Flow & Go, the first automated bartender designed for the commercial environment. Flow & Go fills the need that is starting to return as the world turns to normal. By combining a smartphone app with an intelligent physical system, customers can say goodbye to waiting in lines to order drinks and enjoy the convenience of fully electronic payment and completely custom drink creation right from their device. Flow & Go was defined to be an intelligent system capable of creating a variety of complex mixed alcoholic beverages to be designed and constructed in 12 weeks and for a budget of $300. Use this automated bartender, an Android app was developed for a customer to easily be able to place an order and confirm their pickup once the drink is ready. The system needs to have low error so that it can compete with the drink quality of that made by a human bartender and to be easy to service by a human employee when drink ingredients run out. The system will be able to dispense ingredients within a 5% accuracy using electronically controlled valves, which will close at the correct moment to ensure a zero waste policy for the drinks being poured. The system will be able to mix the drink once it is complete and notify the user once it is ready. The Flow and Go system has four subsystems a fluid subsystem, which pours a specified amount of each required ingredient, a mixing system, which mixes the ingredients, a camera and display subsystem, which reads a QR code to verify that the correct user receives their drink while displaying information, and an Android app, which is used to order the drinks. The process of ordering drinks starts with ordering it on your phone through an Android app. When the app opens up, you are greeted by a list of drinks to choose from. To display this list, we use something called a card view, in Android Studio. This card view contains an image and text, which will then go into a recycler view that will display multiple cards. To populate the list, we generate a list of our data type item. Item contains four different resources. One will be an image resource, one will be a string for the name of the drink, another will be for the details of the drink. Lastly, there will be an integer that toggles whether a checkbox is visible or invisible. This mutable list is then interpreted by the item's adapter, which translates the mutable list into a format readable and viewable by the recycler view. In terms of functionality, you can do one of three things. Click a drink item to select the drink, click the next button, or click the admin button. When you click a drink item, that item's position in the list is stored in a variable and the checkbox is updated to be visible. When you click next, you are sent to the ingredients screen and it passes along the drink choice. When you click the admin button, you are sent to the admin login screen. To implement this, we must set onclick listeners for each button. These onclick listeners will then set up an intent to go to a new screen. If you wish to pass data around between each screen, you must add extras to the intent. The ingredients screen is handled in a very similar fashion to the drink screen. However, a few things have changed. First thing, there's a lot more variables to keep track of. We have to keep track of what drink was selected, what the selected ingredient is if we select an ingredient, the volumes of each ingredient needed, as well as a count variable that is retrieved from Firebase. The selected ingredient is handled by the onclick function. The volumes of each ingredient are determined by the drink chosen or by the manually entered volume on the servings page. The count variable is needed to be determined at this stage because Firebase cannot send the data in time when it is needed. When clicking an ingredient, the user will be moved to the servings page. They may enter in a value in the edit text box, which converts the edited text into a string and then into a double. This data is then passed back to the ingredients screen, only if the total volume of liquid chosen is less than 300 milliliters. After the user has customized their drink or chosen a preset drink, the user is presented with an order detail screen just to confirm that this is what the user wants and doesn't order something by mistake. The screen is set up by having 10 placeholder locations and subsequently displaying ingredients based on what the order contained, as well as displaying the volume of however much the user ordered. There are 10 placeholder locations since the Flow and Go system can contain up to 10 ingredients, and therefore someone's drink may technically contain all 10 ingredients. Therefore, there needs to be enough room to display on the screen without missing an ingredient. This will automatically scale on the user's device and all ingredients can fit while still being readable. 
Once the user has confirmed their order, they are taken to an order confirmation screen. This screen gives the user instructions about how to claim their drink once it is complete, in which the user scans a generated QR code at the Flow and Go system. Once the user has reached the screen, the Flow and Go system is signaled to begin making the drink. All 10 possible ingredient amounts are sent to Firebase to be retrieved by the code executed on the Raspberry Pi. If an ingredient was not used in the order, this value is still sent over just as a value of zero. The QR code is generated by the order number value, which guarantees that no two individuals will have the same generated QR code since this value is incremented after every order. Here is the login screen to get to the admin controls of the Flow and Go system. The user is prompted for a username and password and cannot progress forward until they enter the correct identification information. If somebody tries to log in with the incorrect login information, then the user cannot move forward. Once we enter the correct information, the user may proceed and then we'll move on to the admin controls. The default username and password are just that, username and password. And this value would obviously be customizable to the Flow and Go owner in an actual commercial environment. This operation simply works by making sure that the two strings are equal, the preset correct information, and the values that the user entered. When entering in a password, the character values are hidden as a standard security measure. The admin control page has two buttons, one to return home and one to initialize the Flow and Go system. The primary functionality of the initialize mechanic is to set the order number to zero, which represents a brand new day in the commercial setting. The initialize operation also sets all the ingredient amounts to zero. This is done by setting their internal values to zero and sending this information to Google's Firebase platform. Within this screen, additional functionality would be implemented in a commercialized product, such as the ability to change ingredients. Firebase is a real-time database run by Google. It allows synchronization of application data across many different platforms and stores the data on the cloud. It allows us to save data from each drink. The amount variable corresponds to the volume of liquid for each ingredient in a drink. It only stores the most recent drink and updates the data when a new drink is ordered. The count variable is incremented after every drink, documenting that a new drink has been ordered. This allows us to keep track of the total number of drinks. Once the count variable has been incremented, the Raspberry Pi microcomputer pulls a drink from the database and pushes this data to a first-in, first-out queue. This is done using multi-threading, which allows the Pi to constantly pull data from the database independently of the drink pouring process. When the queue is not empty, one thread is popping drinks from the queue and creating them. The first step in creating drink is moving the track to the pouring station. A linear rail system moves the cup over to the pouring station. The rail movement is powered by a NEMA 17 stepper motor, which is controlled by a TB6600 stepper motor driver connected to the Raspberry Pi. The stepper motor turns a lead screw, which is attached to the bottom of the platform containing the weight sensor and the cup. The stepper motor driver requires two inputs, a direction input and a pulse input. When the pulse input is toggled on and off, it makes the stepper motor rotate one step, which is 1.8 degrees of rotation. In the code, a loop is used to pulse this input on and off for a specific number of steps, correlating to the distance between the mixing station and the pouring station. Once the cup has reached the pouring station, each ingredient begins pouring one at a time. The drink is held at the top in a custom-made bottle holder made with a 3D printed part inside of a funnel. The drink flows out until the air pressure between the inside of the bottle and the outside air equalizes, preventing overflow while allowing airflow into the pouring stream of fluid. This funnel connects to a manual ball valve with a quarter inch inner diameter tubing. When the Raspberry Pi specifies that this ingredient is required, a miniature servo spins 180 degrees, opening the valve, which requires 90 degrees of rotation, using a 1 to 2 gear reduction made from laser cut basswood. This allows more torque to be produced by the miniature servo motors. These servos are controlled by a PWM signal, with the duty cycle corresponding to the degrees of rotation. Some of these servos were not built with intolerance, and we found that an offset to the duty cycle value needed to be added for these. Rather than creating 10 different PWM signals for each ingredient, the Raspberry Pi selects the correct ingredient using a 1 to 16 demultiplexer circuit with one PWM control signal as the input and four static outputs as the select lines. This allows the Raspberry Pi to use only five outputs for the 10 servos rather than 10 and also allows for more expansion in the future. Once the valve opens, fluid flows into the cup, which sits on top of a load cell weight sensor. This sensor is able to detect the weight of the fluid within one gram. The valve remains open until the load cell detects slightly less than the required amount of the ingredient. 
This is done by keeping the load cell in a loop until the amount is met. An error amount is subtracted from the required amount of the ingredient in order to account for the time that it takes the valves to close. After all of the ingredients are poured to the correct amounts, the linear rail system moves the platform and the cup back to the starting position. Once the cup is in position, a mixer lowers into the drink through a winch-based system. A servo motor at the top spins, allowing a length of twine off the spool in order to lower the servo containing a mixing arm. Once lowered, this servo spins for 10 seconds before being retracted by the winch system. This system works similarly to the valve servos, using a PWM signal set to specific duty cycles in order to control the rotation. The servos used here were continuous rotation servos, so rather than controlling the degree of rotation with the duty cycle, the direction of rotation is controlled for a set amount of time. Once the mixing process is complete, a display will tell the user to take their drink. This is a 16x2 serial LCD display that communicates with the Raspberry Pi using I2C protocol. The 1080p camera will then begin scanning for QR codes. The Raspberry Pi runs a function that scans through the video stream produced by the camera using OpenCV and searches for QR codes. Once a code is found, it is decoded and compared to a local ID for the drink. If these match, then the display will tell the user to pick up their drink. If they do not match, then the display will tell the user their drink is not ready. The most important aspect of analyzing the performance of this system is getting an accurate volume of liquid for each pour. This was measured in two different ways. The first way is the total volume of liquid poured for each drink, and the second way is the total volume for, of each ingredient. The goal of this project was to get within 5% for both of these measurements. When calculating the error for a single ingredient, we used a goal volume of 50 milliliters. Each valve is going to have different amounts of error, so they will all be treated separately. The valve with the most error was valve 6 at 4.28%, and most of the valves stayed under 2%, um, with some being fractions of a percent. This was well within the goal percentage. Uh, calculating the error for an entire drink is much simpler. After taking care of the error for the individual valves, we ensure that the final drink will have less than 5% error. On average, the error for the entire drink was 2.08%, which is well within the 5% threshold. The next aspect of analyzing the performance of the system is by the time it takes to create the drink. This will depend on the number of ingredients used, uh, the amounts of for each ingredient, and the number of drinks currently in the queue. We chose a standard drink size of 200 milliliters with two ingredients. One ingredient is 50 milliliters while the other is 150 milliliters. Creating this drink takes about 1 minute and 30 seconds. Pouring the ingredients takes nearly 50% of the time at 43 seconds. Flow and Go's strengths are its precision, ease of use, and capacity for upgrade. For a commercial implementation, the prototype would be expanded to include more drink ingredients, interaction with a bar's soda gun, an ice dispenser, cup dispenser, longer track to accommodate more drinks, and a container to safely store the drink until it is picked up. The weaknesses at this time are the lack of an iOS version of the app, the unreliability of the wooden gears, and the speed at which drinks are made. The thin tubing on the dispenser slows the production of the drink, and the rail system is relatively slow to move. While the production speed is fine for home use and demonstration, it will need to be improved for commercial implementation.